This is CNN. Recently, they aired a report about how some parents and government officials are concerned about certain reading material found in school libraries. Let's take a look. This is a school librarian in Texas. Why are you afraid to show your face? Because there was a day not too long ago when I had to stop and think when they come in with handcuffs and they come in with a warrant for my arrest for alleging that I've provided obscene material to minors, who am I going to call first? Uh-huh. First of all, if you're a school librarian and you can't tell what is obscene and what isn't, you're in the wrong line of work. Second, if there is a book in your system and you're afraid of being arrested because of it, just remove it off the shelf while the process plays out. But if keeping a potentially inappropriate book in your system is the hell you want to die on, be my guest. Across Texas, protesters at school board meetings are accusing educators of forcing pornography or obscene content on children. This is not a political thing. This is not a witch hunt. This is genuine but concern for children. It's abuse. It is grooming behavior. It's predatory. Now, you're going to see throughout Evan McMorris Santero's report that concerned parents are painted as unreasonable agitators and that librarians are poor, helpless victims who just want to open up children's minds. For example, this is a parent with three children who is being allowed to speak at a school board meeting. CNN labels her as a protester. And in that clip, the parent was referring to one specific title, Out of Darkness by Ashley Hope Perez. Here's what the mom had to say about it. I've even heard of a couple teachers actually assigning it to their entire class. I know one of the titles is Out of Darkness, and the pages I read from that book were appalling, graphic, sexually explicit. And her assessment is correct. Out of Darkness contains profanity and sexually explicit content. And yet, this book was not only found in libraries of middle schools, but according to several parents, it was assigned reading. But defenders of the book say that this is okay because it's all about historical context or something. In a tweet, Andrew Carr, the book's editor, wrote the following. To be clear, Out of Darkness has scenes of consensual sexual intimacy, as well as scenes of violent sexual assault. But it's clearly a book about America and our complicated, deadly relationship with race, and all such scenes forward that purpose. And yet, the book is labeled as young adult fiction for 8th to 12th graders. I'm sorry, but that's complete nonsense. The anger is largely aimed at school libraries, and many Texas politicians are on board. In October, Republican state legislator Matt Krause requested every school district in the state scour their libraries for a list of 850 books. So Representative Kraus wrote a letter to the Deputy Commissioner of School Programs and several superintendents saying, Recently, a number of Texas school districts around the state have removed books from libraries and or classrooms after receiving objections from students, parents, and taxpayers. Then he provided links to several news articles covering some of these controversial titles. One of those titles is The Breakaways by Kathy G. Johnson. It's a coming-of-age graphic novel about a middle school soccer team. Now, after a complaint pointed out that the book was inappropriate for elementary school students, the Spring Branch Independent School District temporarily removed the book for review. The Reconsideration Committee determined that the book was not age-appropriate, nor was it appropriate for its intended educational use. The Reconsideration Committee recommended that the breakaways not be available in elementary libraries. The book is no longer available in elementary schools. In other words, the book is not appropriate for younger children, but is still available in middle school and high school libraries. And yet headlines like this one suggest that the school board is banning the book from its school system entirely. But with that said, the list of books that Texas Representative Krauss provided isn't a list of books that need to be banned from school systems per se, 
but books that may be inappropriate for some students and or age groups. Because like the breakaways, not every book ever made is appropriate for every age group. That's just common sense. But if you question it, you're probably a racist and or a bigot. The list includes the letter Q, queer writers notes to their younger selves. Yeah, so the letter Q includes tales of teenage drinking, drug use, and for the back of a better family friendly term, fooling around. So I'm gonna say that yes, it belongs on that list. The Cider House Rules, a coming of age story that features a character who performs abortions. And that's your explanation right there. Clearly not suitable for all age groups. The report also featured The Handmaid's Tale, the graphic novel. And that book is on the list, presumably because of the illustrations containing nudity and other sexual content. I should point out, by the way, that the novel itself is not on the list, only the graphic novel. And New Kid, a graphic novel about a black student's struggles fitting in at a majority white school. So there was some controversy regarding New Kid. At a school district in Texas, New Kid was pulled from shelves after a group of parents complained that the book promoted critical race theory and Marxism. Now for this video, I've read New Kid, and I can say that those complaints are not valid. And if I had to give an opinion, I'd probably say that it's not appropriate for elementary school students, but that's about it. Anyway, within a week and a half of its removal, the book was reviewed and reinstated. So obviously, yes, there are cases where parents overreact, but that is why these reconsideration processes exist. With that said, just because parents are sometimes wrong in their assessments doesn't mean that there aren't legitimate concerns or complaints. Republican Governor Greg Abbott took things a step further, ordering officials to investigate any criminal activity in public schools after complaints about two LGBTQ-themed books he said were pornographic. Now, you may have noticed that Evan McMorris Santoro didn't mention the titles of those two LGBTQ-themed books. And I think you can guess why. So the first of the two books singled out by Governor Abbott is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. I will not be reading out loud any text from the book, but if you want to see what all the fuss is about, excerpts from the book are available online. And with that, I can tell you unequivocally that Governor Abbott's assessment of In the Dream House is spot on. I know you're shocked. And according to Houston Public Media, even the author admits to this. Whenever the book is quoted, it's always the sex scenes that are sort of highlighted. You don't say. But she stressed, In the Dream House is a memoir about more than sex. It's about a lot of things, including a time that I spent in an abusive relationship with another woman. So it's a memoir and a book exploring abuse in same-sex relationships and the phenomenon of it and why it's not talked about. You know, perfect content for a child. I have never experienced anything like that before where um, a government agency or uh, any kind of government entity was interested in specifically what kinds of books were in the library. Well, maybe if some librarians and educators weren't providing age inappropriate books, then maybe the state government wouldn't have to step in and do your jobs for you. This is happening all over the country. LGBTQ and racial themed books written for children and young adults are facing powerful resistance. Educators are being put on notice. This is pornography, plain and simple, and it does not belong in our schools. Again, notice how CNN is framing this. They say that there are books written for children and young adults that are facing resistance from parents strictly because these books are about LGBTQ and race issues. Then immediately, they show an angry man at a school board meeting. But let's see what he's actually yelling about. Tell me how these pictures are educational in any purpose. The artwork that he is pointing to is from the book Gender Queer, which is a graphic novel that is not quite made for children. First, there's this page where the book's protagonist is online considering buying a special toy to use. Then there's this panel containing the URL to an adult website. Then there's a page featuring talk 
about having relations with an other person and showing the adult content of their texts. And then there's the book's most notorious image, which I have blurred the crap out of to meet YouTube community guidelines. And if you have to blur it out on YouTube, it's not appropriate to be seen by children. Wait a second. I thought CNN said that these books were written for children and young adults. LGBTQ and racial theme books written for children and young adults. Well, of course CNN would think that. Now, am I saying that this book shouldn't exist? No, I'm not. But does it belong in a K-12 school library? Lord, no. But according to Andrew Carr, the book editor from earlier, if you want to remove this book from a school library, you're dangerous. People who seek to remove books from libraries are reliably among the most dangerous adults in America where the actual welfare of children is concerned. So let me get this straight. Librarians and educators who fight against removing books that contain very questionable content are some sort of free speech heroes. But parents wanting to protect their children from explicit material, they're the ones that are in fact dangerous and they're putting their children at risk. And for the record, I asked Andrew Carr on Twitter whether or not he would be comfortable letting his young children read books like Genderqueer. Even with all the examples that I showed, here's how he replied. Yes, without a second thought. Both of them may have read it already, or at least dipped in for all I know. And then he later added, I absolutely want my 13-year-old son to have access to all the things you've mentioned. Those scenes have real power and are thoughtfully done. Yeah, I'm going to say that his judgment is questionable at best. And on that disturbing note, thanks for watching. Be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel, and I hope to see you next time. If there is a next time.